Hey guys, welcome back to our Border World Cup report straight out of China, Chongqing. Chongqing. We'll start with the girls' women's finals. Miho Nonaka, Akio Noguchi, Katya Kalic, Jessica Pils, Stasha Gejo, and Ekaterina Kiprianova. I've seen her last year uh, for the World Cup simulation at Border World Munich. Really tall and strong, strong, strong. Shauna Coxie and Janja Garnbrandt are not taking part due to different reasons at the World Cups in China, Japan and USA, Vale. And probably because of this we have uh, more new fresh faces in the women's finals this time. The semi-final round was pretty hard, pretty tough for the girls and it looked like no, no one of the girls would be able to pull off four tops. But then Miho and Akio came and they both made it into the fi made it into the finals uh, with both four tops and they are so far ahead of all the other girls and that's what we will see in this pretty hard, pretty tough round. Usually the girls finals used to be pretty soft or softer than the men's finals and really quick and fast over. Not this time, this time the round was really hard. We don't have too much slap stuff anyway at Chongqing. Um, we have three overhang boulders for the women and one slap. So let's dive straight into the boulders. Boulder number one for the women was complex, pure power and really burly on green big holes. The start was feet first into this big green dish and it was really complex to find the right order and to find the right yeah just solution how to get uh, over the lip once you were over the lip you had to cope with this uh, cope and deal with this big green side pull and then you had to cross over that was uh, not easy to see or easy to get once you had the big uh, side pull you had to cross over with your left hand not with your right hand like Stasha is doing here because with the right hand you are open you fall to the left with crossing over like Katya is doing your left foot has a lot of pressure on it and you can match not easily but you can match and then the next move was even harder like we can see here once you crossed over like Jesse here you had to get your foot into the handhold, match and then throw for the zone hold. Jesse stays low and tries to pull really hard but it looks a little bit length dependent to get it to the zone first but then it's Akio time. Akio Noguchi full of confidence she knows what she's doing there she has a lot of power body tension she climbs straight and really quick through the lower part of the bowler gets into the side pull which is apparently quite good gets her feet up and then with her left foot she pushes really hard so she can cross over with her left hand and then she matches the hold after she put her right foot into the dish and she has her right foot higher like we can see here throwing out to the zone hold then feet over to the right to stabilize hip over to the right really good hip placement to the penultimate hold and one more move to get to the top. First and only flash of his of this bowler, bowler number one. Miho looked a little bit nervous and not really confident. In an interview before she said she had to fight really hard in the semi-final round and maybe she was under a lot of pressure. And she went with her right hand first. I don't know why, maybe they talk different stuff in the isolation and then in her second try she crossed over then she had to think again and now we see how important it is to get your foot higher and not only the foot even both hands are really important to start higher in general and don't to jump from really low like Jesse did that's it boulder number one two tops a uh, different amount of tries for the tops so already a split and a ranking all the climbers got a different height as well and Akio was in lead with one flash boulder number two the only slab only not overhanging climb unstable tricky balancey complex you needed confidence started with a stand up move to get your left foot to the left then shift your body weight over to the left then you 
could cross through, step through with your feet, or do this balancey foot swap like Stasha is doing here, and then the crux move to the zone, the step over dynamic move to the left, where you had to cross through as slow as possible with your foot. Katja Kardic had a lot of problems with the first section. She never did it once. Then she needed three and a half minutes. Then she ran out of time, so she had to hurry up, and she made it happen just in time to do the boulder. No second left to spare. <laughs> really emotional, really great talk on this slap. Okay, let's have a look at the tricky step over to the left. As mentioned before, it's really, really important to do it as slow as possible. On the left, we can see Akio in her first try. She goes with her hand to the left and crosses through with her right leg at the same time. In her second try, she reaches the zone hold first, keeps stability with her left foot as long as possible, and then steps through with her right foot. Just minor details, but it's a lot less momentum and makes it possible and easy to hold on to the zone hold. Okay, one of my favorite things to do is uh, watching two climbers in a split screen, like here. Especially on Slap, we can see how much more experienced Akio is in her second try. She knows what to do. She's really confident crossing through with her right foot onto this volume. Just way more confidence, experience as well. And that's why she will win this World Cup later. Sorry, spoiler alert. Akio will send all the problems in her typical, really confident, really elegant good style like if you want to boulder you want to boulder like akia almost weightless perfect good technique confident for the last move soft and powerful for the jump compared to stasha who's doing this at the same time she's doing still the foot swap then going to the left and then she has to do the top move two times because she didn't commit fully even though she is a little bit taller than akia but I think that's part of the experience as well. Like she said afterwards, she's not that experienced and uh, sometimes a little bit nervous or hasty, like we can see here. So this will come with time. As mentioned in my last report, timing is really important. Even the timing when you start, last starter, first starter. Miho, for example, she said she lost lots of power in the qualification. She overcomplicated this move. She wanted to do it too quickly and so she couldn't even send it and after co over complicating this thing maybe thinking it was a parkour move a trickster move Akio was the only one sending the first two blocks and uh, we are going to the third problem problem number three the pink awkward corner climb I love it I think my favorite climbs from Chongqing have been or still are the corner climbs which means they are a little bit tricky to read, they are really powerful. You could see the people fighting from the beginning to the end. The hardest part was getting into this corner, which was really, really exhausting and tiring. Feet first and you could turn around like Stasha is doing here. It's really hard to get your left foot below your left hand. So she turns around and tries to get underneath the zone and tries to get higher with her left foot hold later. But everything is just unstable. Doesn't matter which position you try, you have to push hard, pull hard, and you have to commit really hard. It's just incredible powerful. Ekaterina here, one of the taller climbers, I think the tallest woman of the whole final round, she pushed the whole climb her whole body around until 180 degrees so she could reach the zone and then she had to turn around again to get to the top. Her one and only top in this competition, but it's just incredible how hard this block is and still how many possibilities and options we've seen to send it. You could climb it backwards and forwards through the corner section, like we see here. Jessica, she climbs it forwards. Mihu turns around and climbs it backwards with her back to the wall, but the most impressive send in general at all was Akio Noguchi with a flash. In her flash try she tried at first to go to the right low, then she climbed back again 
to the volume, try to mental onto the volume. I don't know what she was imagining there or thinking there. Then she tried it back low again, trying to get her elbow and her foot in a stable position. Her elbow was fixed so she could reach the zone hold and move her body a little bit further to the right. And she is not only flexible, she's really, really powerful. And after the zone hold, no problem at all to finish this problem for Akio Noguchi. The one and only flash of this problem, if I'm not mistaken. This one was the easiest boulder so far. Everyone except Katja Kadic sent it sooner or later in different amount of tries and different climbing styles. So Akio was still in lead before we go to boulder number four. Boulder number four, the dynamic finish, supposed to be dynamic first move right left and kick the volume like Stasha is doing here and a flipperoo and then a flip, going to the jug, killing the momentum with the undercling. All the moves looked incredible great, starting with a toe hook then going over to the left, it looked complicated and really hard and then Akio Noguchi came and she just... She just smashed it, she just reached higher, a lot of body tension and she was able to minimize the swing everywhere. She didn't even jump once, she crimped the hell out of it. She put a heel hook where no one expected a heel hook and was able to hold the undercling. This is a really good example how hard it is to force or set moves for the girls, especially dynamic, because they have it just really really different body type to all the male setters. All the setters would need to be way more flexible like no male setters flexible like, like Akio no Gucci or Mio no Naka and looking for these solutions how to skip holes or how to skip jumps sometimes and to keep the control at every time of the boulder. On the other hand Akio is a really really confident slow and controlled climber Mio is a new generation and she likes these jumps, she's used to these jumps like we could see here. But the flip jump looked maybe a little bit too over complicated and she was able, as mentioned before, she's really flexible, like guys maybe never would try it like this. And to put a heel hook in and just crimp the other crimp and do it static to the top. After all, 4 tops and 5 tries, Akio no Gucci Show, congratulations really really she showed all the other girls how it's done and to be honest there's such a huge gap between Akio and Miho who wasn't in her best shape after the semi-final. I really like this time is that the headsetter Hiroshi Okano they had an interview before the final with him and they asked him because of the semi-final round was really hard whether they would make the final a little bit easier and he was just like no we want to see the best win and we will make it as hard as it is planned and sometimes it works sometimes not and this time it was really hard for four competitors who made only one top but on the other hand we wanted to see the best win and this time it wasn't that easy the final for the women's and I think it was worth it to see Akio in her full ability climbing ability her level is so high she's climbing so well so well rounded so much experience and confidence and i can't wait to see her climbing next weekend see you again at the boys round